a good place to end. Yes. All right. Well, it's a few minutes late. That's fine. Most of the others are like a minute or so early. The last episode is, you know. Not this one. I am not psychic enough to know how long this episode will be. I'd say on a scale of 1 to 100, I am zero psychic. Mm. And, you know, except apparently microwave timers, which still scares Angel. Everyone in this house, apparently, you set a microwave timer, we will be on our way back to it by the time there's five seconds on the clock. Like, every single one of us usually gets there just in time to hit the stop button. And you're like, how do you do that? I'm like, I don't know. With scary microwave magic. Yeah, it's microwave psychic ability. I think we just have really decent internal timing. Which, well, that's the boring answer. Yeah. Well, I'm boring. Once again, I actually found someone who um, seemed to understand when I was discussing with them how wonderful boring shit is. Uh. Uh, I was talking to them about it, or talking with a person who is a Gulf War veteran who was, you know, had survived and had post-traumatic stress disorder. And they got basically all of their, they recovered completely, thankfully. Uh-huh. And, but they now ba found that the best therapy for them is the absolutely mundane and completely boring-ass shit no one ever wants to do. Like, they got a job in a mailroom <laughs> at, where, you know, some large corporation. And they love it, apparently. Because all they do is sit in the same place all day and sort letters into stacks by zip code. And then they put them in a box and move them to somewhere where those letters for that particular zip code go. And then they go back and they do that again. And they do this at a leisurely pace for about eight hours, five days a week. And as he said, nothing exciting ever happens. I never have to worry about people running in and, you know, suddenly screaming. And, you know, it triggering, you know, an episode of PTSD or anything like that. Uh, and I, all I do is I sit and I count letters and I rubber band them into stacks of ten because bulk mailing is easier that way. And then I do this, that, the other thing. And on the weekend, I go home and I play Puzzle Quest. And I talk, or I watch, you know, movies and this, that, and the other thing. And do nothing stressful at all or nothing that any of my friends think is any way interesting. Yeah, because I think we were talking about D and D, and that's how we met. And they're like, "Yeah, I love D and D because blah 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 blah, and it's a great, you know, stress-free outlet for blah blah blah." And I'm like, "Yeah, most people think it's boring as hell," and he's like, "That's why I love it." <laughs> I'm like, okay. Uh, but um. It was just, you know, very funny because it's like, I, I'm glad I see someone who understands. But then it kind of goes when it says a lot that the exact same mindset of a person who has survived the horrors of war and, you know, it is suffering post-traumatic stress disorder, the exact same mental state can be acquired from living in Baltimore City. <laughs> Like, that's actually a little terrifying now that I stop to think about it. But it's not surprising at all. Not at all. I mean, I, I, I live in a... I, I don't live in a horrible neighborhood. I don't have to worry about my ass getting mugged in broad daylight or shot in broad daylight. And I, uh, you know, have no issue whatsoever walking down the street if I really feel like doing so. Because... We are the suburbs, and mm -hmm. while we might be a slightly low class for you know part of the suburbs, we're still the fucking suburbs. So the cops are around everywhere. Take of that what you will. That being Baltimore City, hmm. but 
you know, I, uh, and so yeah, it's a, it's a relatively nice, quiet place to live, and everything around here is, well, it is, it's, I, I don't want to say it's white, or it's a very white neighborhood. The thing is that it is so interracially mixed, you cannot determine what it is, and it kind of defaults to a nice area because of it. Oh. Huh. Because everyone is racist against everyone else, so everyone minds their own business and curses about everyone behind their backs. <laughs> I mean, in this area, you know, everyone just hates everyone so much. And I'm just sitting here in the middle like, I don't care. I like that there's so many restaurants. <laughs> I mean... Pakistani restaurant, Persian restaurants, uh, I think the Near East Bakery might still be around. I hope it is. They made really, really good, like, Middle Eastern breads and served, sold really, really good quality olives and shit like that and, you know, blah, 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 but, mm -hmm. and then there's, the, oh God, the pizza place, which I can't remember what the hell it was called. I love that place, like, growing up because they had like five dollar 16 inch pizzas cool i mean all they were were like cheese or the minimum amount of cheese and sauce on a dough that had been stretched so thin that you could probably see through it if you held it up to the light mm -hmm. but when you're like 16 with your friends and you want to go out and get something to eat Five dollars for a pizza split three ways is affordable. And, you know... How do we have in this... Was it, um... I'm in conversation with someone earlier. Billy Corrigan, the dumbass from Smashing Pumpkins. Apparently went into a... Some sort of rant about social justice warriors... And how now you can't say what you want to say without getting your ass handed to you, blah, 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 blah. Like, wait, does he still think it's 1995 when his opinion mattered? <laughs> that was when, you know, Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness came out, and that is the Smashing Pumpkins album that everyone had and no one remembers any of the others. And I'm sure there were more, but that was it. That was the album you had in 1995, and you and your friends would listen to it and go, this is so cool. And then everyone threw it away in 1996. One of those, you know. Of course, as a teenager, if you hang out with large groups of people, you are desperately, desperately concerned about what they think of you. Because for some reason that's an uh, that is important, but oh god, what was it? I was talking to my friend Eric the other day, and he was mentioning when he was a teenager, he had just bought and ordered every single Nirvana CD when Kurt Cobain killed himself, like the day. And he was like, "Now I can't like this band because everyone will think I'm just liking it as a poser." <sighs> and fortunately for him, apparently everyone else in his school decided to be a tremendous poser and start liking it. <laughs> so he could actually listen to it and decided he liked them on his own. But, man, I just don't... Uh, the sad thing is I don't like, like, 90% of the music from when I was technically a teenager. Technically a teenager? Yeah, well, I say technically because... I think I matured in, like, you know, I matured like a fucking sine wave, where I would suddenly have really large bursts of maturity, then really large bursts of immaturity, and it would just go back and forth over the course of, like, ten years, until I finally hit, like, twenty, and I just decided to stick with immature. <laughs> So I had one of those moments today where I realized that I have not nearly matured as much as I always thought I did growing up. Or growing up, I should say, over the past ten years. Well, that's a good sign I'm not that mature anyway. But, <laughs> um, as Angel was talking about at a construction site, 
some guy came up and started hitting on her. And granted, he wasn't like a creep or an asshole about it. He was just flirting. Uh-huh. But my immediate thought was, I'm going to have to kill this man. <laughs> and immediately followed by, wow, that's a bit harsh. Followed <laughs> by, nah, not really. <laughs> Uh, it was one of those, maybe I haven't matured quite as much as I thought I have. But yeah, that was not, wow, I'm going to have to kill this man. Where'd that come from? I still hear the sounds of skeletons. I keep hoping it's like, you know, a dungeon below me or something. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be interesting. Yeah. I'm kind of hoping one of us discovers something interesting. I mean, I would put on the uh, see-through walls texture pack just to check, but that would be kind of cheating and not... Or make it not as interesting. Mm-hmm. Because if we do stumble upon dungeons or mine shafts or the grave of Sir Wembley Scott Prescott, then, you know, it should be sudden and shocking and unusual. Unless I have no idea who Sir Wembley Scott Prescott is. I'm going to go with someone very British. Just makes me want some brisket. And I, uh... Mm, corned beef. Mm, corned beef does sound good. That was the thing that kind of pissed me off. They're like, salad bar, they had a boiled cabbage, but they didn't have any corned beef. It's like, what? It's cabbage water. Did you boil it with corned beef? No, this is cabbage water. <laughs> no one wants cabbage water. I thought as I watched people walk up and get spoonfuls of cabbage water. Oh, <laughs> uh, so, um... They had deep-fried breaded okra, which Angel was very excited to see, and then not excited when she took a bite of it when we went to, yes, once again, Golden Growl. We went to Golden Growl. It was like four episodes ago. None of you know, have an idea what the fuck we're talking about. Right. But yeah. But yeah, that was just um, uh, the sadness on her face was palpable. Just, uh, oh, I know. This is the North. No one knows how to cook that. No one knows how to cook your horrible, goopy semen vegetable. I was going to say, nobody knows how to cook it because nobody wants to eat it. Yeah. I was going to say, well, it's one of those poor people foods for the South because you can grow okra anywhere. I know, but nobody in the North wants to eat it. I was going to say, well, I've had, when she cooks it or when Angel cooks it, I, I'll eat the shit out of that. It's delicious. She knows how to cook food and give it flavor. <laughs> but anyone else? And it's just a, no, nah, no, nah, that's fine. I don't want your semen full lead or lawn clippings. <laughs> um, that's what it tastes like. I mean, like, oh, I've bitten to lawn clippings and there's something really, really sticky and, you know, just horribly seminal feeling inside of my face. <laughs> this isn't what I wanted out of my life at all. Taste chlorophyll and feel self-hatred. Lovely. <laughs> uh, but, you know, around here, if you asked anyone, it's, uh, yeah, blah, 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 okra. Oh, that's black people food. No, it's not. That's poor people food. Stop it. I know we're a northern state, but stop acting so northern. <laughs> mm. Like, you know. It, and that's the thing. It is, it is poor people food. Growing up, I can tell you fried chicken and watermelon was something everyone ate. Everyone ate. Because it tasted good. And more than that, it was easy food that you could make on a hot day and then leave somewhere to cool down. Mm -hmm. And the watermelon, of course, is always delicious because it's effing watermelon. And I saw the other day that someone created deep fried watermelon. I was surprised it didn't explode. You would think that because of the, you know, water. Right. <laughs> but apparently they figured out a way to deep fry, water, uh, deep fry watermelon. And a 
black friend of mine on Facebook actually went into a rant about how racist this was, and I'm like, I don't understand. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Just don't eat it if it upsets you. I don't even know. I just keep my face shut on the internet now. Good what? plan. Like... Like, you almost never post on Facebook, and I definitely never post on my official Facebook that I made for this ages ago and have since never touched. Mm -hmm. like, why? Like, because I don't want to get in arguments. When I post something, I go, I get in into an argument. <laughs> Whenever I say anything, because I have very strong, strong opinions. Uh, and if you are, disagree with my opinions, you are wrong or an asshole. Because you are the buddy bears and you always get along. Yes. We do a little dance and then we sing a little song. And if you ever dif disagree, it means that you're wrong. Uh, but, um, like, I got, well, this is actually a very good example of, um, someone posted on a friend's Facebook. They were talking about uh, the Fort McMurray fires. Uh-huh. And... Their reaction to it was, and they are Canadian, or, or well, someone on their friends list reaction to it was, who is also Canadian, said, fuck them, let them all burn. And I respond with, you look like a gentleman who has a shelf full of well-used dragon dildos, am I right? <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm like, no, I'm not saying anything's wrong with that, I'm just saying, somewhere in your house... There is a big ass shelf of dragon dildos. They are all very well used, very well loved, and they are the they are the executive models, the ones that are you know the ones that you look at and go, "There's no way a human being could fit that inside of them," but you <laughs> prove them wrong, and cue indignant yelling. I'm like, look at your profile pic. It looks like you're using one in the pic. Look at how, you know, look at the look on your face. That is the face of a man with a dragon's dick in his asshole. <laughs> Cue it more indignant, screaming <laughs> online with me just going, come on, it's okay. You can admit it here. We're all friends. And, you know, anytime they would try and change the subject about blah, 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 I'm like, well, uh, it may be true. But I don't own any dragon dildos. And then immediately people started coming in and backing me up going, Yeah, you pretty. I think I see a dragon dildo in the background of your profile picture too. <laughs> Do you look like a man who knows a dragon dildo? And then start <laughs> asking him questions about dragon dildos. Like, this is why I don't, you know, I, I, I stay off because I will... I try and stay off of Facebook because I will just do this. Mm -hmm. And I don't need I, I I don't need to start arguments. I don't need there to be fighting in my life. But every now and then, I just have that little snap where I'm like, I need to make this person miserable for a bit. Yeah. Because they're being an asshole. I mean, you don't have to explain to me. Well, no, it's fun to make people miserable when they're assholes. Yeah. It's good for the environment, too. I've, I've based quite a large part of my self-identity on that in the past. Yeah. It's good for the environment. It's low in fat and carbohydrates. It's fat and carbs and low carbohydrates. I don't know what I'm talking about right now. Well, you never know what you're talking about. I'm finally, I think, losing my mind from all of the uh, cobble mining, but... It's a start. <sighs> I'll mine a different direction for a bit. I'll mine this thing entirely flat so that it looks normal. Well, where's the fun in that? I don't know. But I did to come and visit you just to keep things slightly less crazy. Oh, you're coming over? I might. It's nighttime now. I'm not that suicidal. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend traveling at night. Nah, it seems like a mistake. We don't have resources enough for you to be equipped that well. No. Nah. Well, I mean, I've got like, uh, 60 iron. But I don't want to make armor out of it. Yeah, tools are more important. Yeah. And right now I'm still making all of my tools out of, um... 
all of my tools out of hobble. Oh. And there's that goat. Yeah, 